We are having shorter seasons up here. We have to fight to uh, be able to keep the ski season earlier open. In the olden days, we are started in October. And even before, 10 years ago, the people still been skiing all year round up here. We stopped that about seven years ago. We carried on with a little uh, terrain park for snowboarders in a small area, but we stopped that too because it just gets too slushy. The, uh, the other thing is uh, there hasn't been much, not enough snow fallen over the winters, and that's why the reason we stopped uh, skiing and snowboarding for the summer. As a, a protection inside here to actually make it freeze. When I started here 15 years ago, we had about 20 meters high, big Xerox, instead of continually breaking down in those days. And the last 15 till 17 years, the whole glacier has been retreating uh, to about 200 meters further up the hill. Also, it's uh, incredible. For us, it is a really sad story to see it go so rapidly going down. Because we're living off it, we love the glacier. In a way, it's sort of, uh, even if you look up from the valley, you see it in the summertime, it's white, a white cap and a, and a mountain. Sort of, if you, don't, if you don't see it anymore, it's a big loss for the mountain region, for, for, uh, for areas which really live off tourism. The mean annual thickness loss of glaciers after the end of the so-called Little Ice Age, around 1850, was about 25 centimeters. Um, since the 1980s, um, glaciers in the European Alps lost about 75 centimeters per year. Since 2000, glaciers lost about one meter of ice thickness each year. And in the year 2003, when we had this extreme heat wave in summer, glaciers in the Alps lost about 2.5 meters in one single year. 1900, 2001. Well, Alech Glacier is the, the large. In the European Alps, we lost about 50% of the glacier cover since the end of so-called Little Ice Age around 1850. And the temperature increase since then was about 1 to 1.5 degrees Celsius in the plus Alps. And when we imagine now that the scenarios range between a further increase in temperature by another degree up to another 6 degrees Celsius by the end of this century, uh, then we can imagine what this would mean. Melting of ice, uh, increasing sea levels um, is also a long-term threat which will physically change the landscape of Europe and the landscape of the world. Um, if Greenland melts, um, as, uh, sea level rise of up to 7 meters is being predicted, is being forecasted, 
you cannot adapt to that one. You can build dikes a little bit higher um, to accommodate 50 centimeter, probably one meter sea level at maximum in the Netherlands and somewhere. But seven meter, you can't adapt to. You have to evacuate people. You have to evacuate cities like Cairo, like New York, like London, like Hamburg, like Rome. Preocupa muchísimo el cambio climático. Estamos encontrando que en los últimos años, además de que llueve mucho menos y por tanto tenemos mucha menos agua, y ya tenemos imágenes de, lo que, de, de, de qué es lo que ocurre cuando, hay, cuando no hay agua, cuando no existe agua en estas zonas, nos estamos encontrando con un problema añadido y es que hay cambios brutales que están afectando muchísimo a, a los frutales y a la arboleda. Climate change will have, in the view of the real experts, uh, a tremendous negative impact on biodiversity, uh, reducing it by, they say, approximately 30 percent. This is a, a catastrophe of major proportions. The cost of acting today is significantly less than it is to, uh, to clean up tomorrow. In our calculation, we can actually act uh, against climate change at a very small cost uh, to our economy.